uh, <clears throat> continuing the story on San Juan, uh, we actually flew uh, in at a much higher resolution than the air aircraft and uh, to pick up the urban heat island close to the downtown area. Uh, and there we can see also the urban forest in, in, the, in the city uh, very clear. Again, the gradients are almost 40 degrees in some occasions. And that uh, heat island prevailed all the way over the nighttime when we flew over, over the uh, nighttime area. At the time, this was one of the most uh, revealing urban heat island reported. And uh, it was a surprising result for a coastal urban environment where we'll expect the sea breeze to uh, moderate the local climate. This is on the ground observation to illustrate. This is uh, using uh, weather stations to illustrate the clear classical dome of the heat island in the case of San Juan with the suburbs uh, providing that, that case. So where that take us in terms of the science questions that we posted before. So this is, seems to be the local signal and uh, the question about how that local signal uh, interacts with a much larger signal that the global warming may be representing. So for this, <clears throat> we look at the historical past and present, again, in terms of the land cover, land use, and we see also some devolution of, this, of, the, of the island in terms of going from an agro uh, economy all the way to a more urbanized service oriented. That's what this uh, illustrate in here. So now we're going to impose that large scale signal and then ask that the same question that we posted before. So back to the SSTs, now San Juan in the context, a change in San Juan or tropical coastal city in the context of that particular large scale signal. We actually have researched the, the Caribbean climate change in more detail. This is a publication from 2015, where we're looking more closer the recent trends in the Caribbean, about 0.4, that means about 1.2, 1.3 degrees in 30 years period of time. This is one of the largest uh, warming in recent, in recent times uh, observed. And uh, we also look into whether this signal uh, correlates to the global signal, and that's what the two plus illustrate here. And uh, we can indicate that the warming in the Caribbean is clearly attributed to a, a, a global warming signal. And now we have this city changing at the same time all across. <clears throat> the right-hand side panels, what they illustrate is the period of time where we, we start seeing the, the changes in the SSTs, most, mostly in the recent period of time, and more pronounced in what we call the late rainfall season, which is the hurricane season, in the, in the uh, mid-Atlantic, that's over the, so it days against, against year, this is the average for the whole, for the whole domain. So how we uh, will quantify this uh, relative contribution to the climate, whether it's local or whether it's regional and global, and uh, whether those signals are aggregating or they are canceling to each other. In this case, we use what we call the <clears throat> separation of signal technique proposed by Alper and Stein a number of years ago. And uh, we, without learning from the observations, we postulated a numerical experiment in terms of what would have happened uh, if the present land cover, land use, urbanization, who have been exposed to a pre-warming signal. What will happen if, yeah, great, thank you, yeah. <laughs> and what will happen if, of course, the past land cover land use we have exposed to the present uh, urbanization or vice versa. So in essence, we reconstructed the past. In doing so, we have to be mindful about some potential bias signals such as ENSO. So we selected two ENSO periods that have about the same level of index of the ENSO in the 1950s and also in the, in the present time. This is the numerical experiment. 
that uh, was uh, proposed, and this will allow them to explore the partial or added contributions of each of these signals. So this is some of the result for the case of San Juan, and uh, the top panels represent the land cover land use signal. It's a changes in land cover land use only. The dashes uh, areas represent non-statistical -static significant. The solid color represents statistical significant changes. The lower panel represents the global warming signal. And of course, the top C panel represents the total change when we combine these two signals. So what we can see that is in the case of the thermal response of the CT, the signals tend to aggregate each other um, up to a point a, from a climate perspective of almost five degrees Celsius, that's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And uh, mostly due to the land cover land use. However, we do have a background signal of global warming, which is about a little bit less than half of that. And that signal cannot be then mitigated immediately with local intervention. It's gonna be present uh, there and it's already present in there. We look into what, uh, whether this signal manifests in the vertical structure in the boundary layer, we can see that it's a much active, more convective local environment due to the combined signals of the two. Respect to the hydrology, uh, hydrological cycles is contrary. Actually, the urbanization tends to create a drier environment, uh, while the global warming tends to create a, 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 a more humid environment from precipitable water perspective. And uh, the total contribution is that the Caribbean is getting <clears throat> to a large degree. This is looking into what we call the early rainfall season uh, is getting wetter and that is consistent with the projections altogether. So the case of San Juan tells us that the urbanization uh, is an aggregate signal uh, to the uh, global warming uh, representing a much warmer environment uh, if one of the signal will be acting by itself and uh, uh, urbanization has very little effect in the case of the coastal tropical city in terms of the uh, water, water cycle. We look at the case of LA uh, in the same, uh, with the same uh, approach for a number of reasons. If we remember the SST changes uh, at the global scales uh, point to a cooler uh, SSTs in the coastal California. And that was interesting to, to us. In addition to that, the Southern California experienced a similar growth, of course, in different magnitude in terms of urbanization than San Juan. So that makes the case very interesting to look at both the changing, the changing signals altogether. Surprisingly, we actually found a really, really intriguing result. And we look at the climatology of the, uh, of the uh, air temperatures. These are observations. And then our best projected uh, contour patterns of of the sea breeze, sea breeze. And what it indicates is that over the period of time that we observe, uh, coastal California is, was experiencing or still experiencing a cooling pattern different than San Juan, while inland areas are experiencing a warming pattern. So this is was an unexpected result. And uh, <clears throat> we postulated a hypothesis that increased warming due to global warming was likely a source for increased sea breeze. And therefore, uh, the, or it was suppressing urbanization altogether, creating that cooler environment. Um, and we lived for that with that hypothesis for almost 10 years. And uh, <clears throat> until, uh, yeah. A young uh, student challenges ourselves, our notion of that hypothesis, and uh, indicating that, uh, Professor, we may be 
uh, not looking the right large scale signal, the PVO. So he challenged us say maybe we were looking too recent period of time where the PVO may be facing a decreasing trend. And that's what's in, in reality the case. That's the right hand panel. But we'll leave it that hypothesis for quite some time. And uh, he said, if we look at the time where the PVO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, is on a warming trend, actually the coastal environment is even is warmer. So that challenged the hypothesis and canceled the hypothesis that it was true under a present time where the PVO was actually uh, the decreasing. So to put to test that idea <clears throat> again, that was a, a invalidate the case that we need to understand the combination of these signals, land cover, land use, and global warming. But now we have a regional a signal that we need to uh, pay attention to. So we propose a very similar experiment in San Juan, and uh, <clears throat> it, in this case with the PVO as a background. So we postulated the ensemble on a warming PDO and also on a cooling PDO, right? And uh, <clears throat> clearly is in the case of the warming PDO, we don't, we barely see the coastal cooling in that case, right? So that means that both urbanization and the PDO control the environment creating a much warmer environment. And uh, we may see a little bit of the decrease in temperatures, perhaps with some a small increase in sea breeze at the lower elevation. But in general, we look at the total signal in the panel C, we see that is a totally warmer environment dominated by both global warming and also the PDO. When we look at the decreasing PDO, we have a completely different uh, result. This, this was just a fascinating result. And uh, we continue exploring these uh, questions. So it's not only about the local signal and the global signal, but also the regional signals are as important to look at. And the PDO is a very complex signal to look at it. And that warming environment, uh, it is prevails over the uh, first portion of the of the boundary layer. We can postulate the question whether in, in the next 30, 40 years, and that's a question that needs to be answered, uh, when the PDO initiates a warming uh, cycle, now combined with a much accelerated global warming and a larger urbanization, what will be the case? So that's a question to be, to be answered, we, which will have probably some practical implications. So we open the door to explore that type of question. This is what we call the synthesis of our coastal cooling hypothesis that we need to look into that on a two different cycles, on a warming PDO and a colder P PDO. The colder PDO results into a coastal cooling, a warmer PDO results in a, in a warmer cooling effect. This <clears throat> signal is being recently reported in other, in other areas of coastal cooling, particularly in areas uh, of Southern uh, South America where cooling has been reported. And then there are other regions around the world where we can see those cooling signals. So there's still quite a bit of work to do how these urban environments are interacting with these colder signals in other places. And we can see that in relatively high latitudes where the currents are creating. And this has been observed in very quite a bit of detail and uh, by colleagues in, in Chile, for example, not having been looking into the context of the interaction with urban environments yet. That's something to be exploring later on. <clears throat> so we have you know, learned quite a bit on those two cases of coastal uh, environment, urban environments. We have looked into the case of a New York City in the context of uh, extreme uh, events. The case of New York City in terms of land cover land use, in reality is 
doesn't present that much challenges because the city has not grown as much, but it's actually the intensity of the uh, density of the city interacting with the, with the sea breeze what makes it uh, in, quite interesting. And uh, in this case, we focus on summer events and uh, in the particular case of some socioeconomics uh, interest of heat waves and uh, what happened uh, with our coastal environment for these heat events. So this illustrates that heat, uh, extreme heat events are of a uh, human interest for the, from the point of view of, of health. That's all is indicating uh, in, in here. So we have looked the climatology of, uh, of uh, New York City as well as we did for the other, other regions. We didn't, haven't seen unex, unexpected results, but it's expected that there is a clear uh, warming trends with some coastal biases. And uh, this is what the time series illustrate. The longer period of record is Central Park. It has a much longer record. We can see that a, a continuous a, a warming trend and uh, the uh, other plots are more recent observations from the, from the airports. And uh, they illustrate a, a, a also a, a, a quite a, a increasing a trend in, in those cases. A, however, the, the record is, is shorter and uh, perhaps the slope is being biased by the shorter period of time, but we do see the coastal uh, effect in there. So nothing unexpected, just to report that, yes, uh, even the case of the uh, Northern Atlantic, the uh, urban environment, coastal urban environments are, are, are warming. But interested then uh, in this case is what will happen in the, into the future. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, the land cover land use remain constant as has been uh, for most of the New York City over the past uh, 40 to 50 years uh, altogether. And what this illustrates are the, the climate projections downscale to, to the city. Um, and what it indicates is that the environment will be seeing more extreme uh, heat uh, events. So what will be the coastal effect in this case? We do see some biases in terms of the uh, this uh, likely due to the sea breeze that mitigates uh, those uh, expected uh, extreme heat events. So there is some benefit on that to some degree uh, in some of the scenarios. Uh, there are some cases where the mean heat wave intensity anomaly doesn't receive that particular benefit. So the intensity remains, however, the duration uh, of the days of the events uh, may be uh, mitigated. We see just a mild increase over the next 20 to 30 years, mostly manifested towards the end of the century. Again, that's where we see the departure from the, from the case. So that's the just partial. So that, again, these biases are due to the, the case of the, uh, of, this, of the sea breeze. Water vapor mixing ratio is as important uh, warmer environments absorb a larger amount of uh, water vapor and that creates a more un even uncomfortable, unhealthy environment. And we do see some quite a bit of significant increases on the, uh, on the amount of vapor, uh, almost uniform across. Of course, the humidity will decrease as the temperature uh, increases uh, across. We have also explored the uh, socioeconomics uh, implication or socio-technical implications. What does it mean for uh, variables such as energy demands for, for the city? We have done the projections uh, using the proper modeling techniques that uh, we, we, we are happy to discuss on, on, a, on a later time. The city of New York uh, is, has a, a expressed interest and creating policy as example to mitigate those potential impacts. And uh, just a, a short note on, on this is what may be the case to mitigate these extreme heat events when it refers to, to, uh, to people that may be uh, vulnerable. So uh, on the left-hand side, illustrate the number of air conditioning systems that are available in, in, in the city or families that do not have or buildings that don't have air conditioning to mitigate those extreme heat events. 
policies that have been suggested is to provide everyone with a proper air conditioning. So questions about what the uh, that representatives or the cost of the families can be answered. So we can post some social science questions uh, as I indicated in the, in the beginning. We also look at the case, what will happen if everybody has air conditioning on their extreme heat event to the overall energy infrastructure. And clearly the peak energy is going to increase almost by 20%, which means that we will need a lot of more power plants so solar, any other type of technology that will be released. So there are some um, consequences on exploring mitigations for these anticipated events in the case of this particular coastal coastal city. To, uh, <clears throat> to conclude, there are a number of new questions that are arising as we look into these coastal urban environments. We look at from the thermal point of view, we look at from the hydrology point of view, and uh, new questions are arising in terms of even the air quality, how the heat island that is so strong uh, may be uh, influencing the air quality uh, directly, perhaps by photochemical reaction, for example, in the case of ozone. So this is observations from a 2018 heat wave. The heat wave is in the left-hand side and the ozone production uh, at the sides is in the right-hand side. And that uh, we can see that there was event that almost doubled the, in some instances, the threshold for uh, human uh, health in that case. And this is case a very complex environment about sea breeze modulation of the heat island, uh, interaction of the heat island with air quality, and, uh, all, all together, uh, and how we can um, represent this. So these are very complex uh, plots here that illustrate the sea breeze from in the, with the red uh, uh, contour, as we best uh, were able to represent it, ozone contours, thermal structures on the background, and uh, quite a bit of complexity only for that one event. Uh, so that occurred recently, we can think about a new signal, which is the global warming uh, in uh, interacting with these already complex uh, processes. So, <clears throat> Some of the questions that we are, we are trying to answer is how we represent that from the modeling point of view. This is all based on observations. And uh, this is present new interesting challenges, opportunities uh, that we're exploring with urbanized climate models, not even weather models uh, all together. <clears throat> and uh, we may be able to then explain these processes in the case of when we look at that case, when the, the urbanization is a uh, physics incorporated. We see a much significant ozone levels in the lower uh, plot here. That's very intense ozone in the Northwest part of the city. Again, for that particular one event. So <clears throat> this, uh, again, this is uh, opening really interesting new opportunities. And uh, perhaps we even need new ways to illustrate these multivariable uh, processes in this case are representation of the wind contours, but also the ozone for that, again, that particular one single event. Um, <clears throat> so to conclude some reflections on coastal urban regions are particularly sensitive to climate changes and respond in very unique ways. The tropics, the Pacific, even New York, very different signals. Uh, <clears throat> that complexity of delta land cover land use post climate for coastal urban environment require both long-term climate records, SSTs, observation of long-term land surface properties at urban scale and, uh, and resolution. The construction in the past is tremendously challenging, but also we can learn quite a bit uh, of this. The future size may want it to focus and we'll focus some of that in, in mitigation options particularly population growth in areas that are growing and uh, may grow, but also maybe just the climate signal by itself interacting in very uh, energetic environments such as uh, New, New York City, and looking of course into uh, more uh, additional 
complex variables that are present such as air quality in the context of changing climate. The range of unanswered questions is, and I'm gonna go through all of these, but we have so many questions to, to answer with this uh, type of research. And uh, we hope that uh, in collaboration with colleagues, ASRC and others are, uh, around the US and the world, we can answer some of these questions over the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you.